It first looks like this is in the exact same shot, but then when he closes the door, you realize Hello friends and welcome back to yet another reaction analysis video. In the comments under the last videos, you guys been asking for one particular one. And I totally understand that because that's one of the most famous videos, especially for all of us who are into video editing. I bet almost all of you have seen that one. If not, you definitely have to go check it beforehand. Today we're gonna look at the Watchtower of Turkey by a guy called Leonardo D'Alessandro. So this video is already like four or five years old. It has like five million views on Vimeo and three more million on YouTube. So I bet you know which video I'm talking about. If you're new to this channel, hello and welcome. My name is Florian, I'm a video creator. Normally I help people create their YouTube content and on this channel once or twice per week I'm making this series of reaction videos on which I look at the effects and techniques of some of your favorite video creators on YouTube, break them down so that you can learn something for your editing. So today, Watchtower of Turkey, let's jump into the computer and analyze that one. The video is actually only three and a half minutes long but this could turn into one of them longest analysis simply because there's so many effects and cool transitions and just pure editing geniusness in this video. Let's look at it. So the video directly starts with something that I really would want you to pay attention to, and that is sound effects. Within those first few seconds, you see quite a few detail shots with dust, wind, whistles, and then here the shot with the girl and the deep breath she's taking in, and that immediately sets the tone for a video full of sound effects. Do you hear the swoosh sounds? This is the voice of an embryo past. Then what makes this video very, very special is the voice over here. It's very, very breathy and sort of whispery and it directly gives the feel for the video, especially the script that they've written here. The voiceover is one of the things that makes this video very, very special. The sound of horses and this truck. Whispering very much, but still it's very loud, so they brought the volume up very much. He has a lot of masking transitions, so here the flag is waving over to the side and then here on this point you see that it's masked out into the next shot. And many of those shots come so close behind each other and the motion goes so fast that you don't even realize that. And that's a pattern that goes throughout the entire video. Do you feel me? Then here very close up on the eye and if you look in the pupils here you see it's reflecting the very bright sunlight. He probably even brought the brightness in the eyes up in post. Here you see him with the camera being reflected in the eyes and it's very sunny all around. Do you feel me? This is your control through. At this point I would like to point something out that is a huge difference to many of the travel videos that you normally see on YouTube from people who want to make travel videos but they don't really go anywhere. He has a lot of shots of people, faces, to show emotions, to underline the story. Here's the old man who's looking very very serious and that sort of matches the tone that is being set in the first few seconds with the voiceover and also with the music and this conveys simply a lot of emotion to draw you in. Many travel videos just simply only have drone shots, beaches but no faces and that really makes a difference here in this Powerful land. And here we had like two or three seconds to breathe before now it's gonna really get fast in the video. Now he starts more faces, emotions, kids smiling. Here he starts with the hyperlapses, probably within the last two or three years. One of the most hyped thing in any video editing. He's already been using that five years ago. More faces, more hyperlapse. Then did you hear the sound? The moment that you see the chandeliers, you have this kind of glass shattering, glass breaking sound or, or maybe just a hand going through the crystals. Listen to that. Here, did you hear that? Probably 120 frames. And here's when he gets really fast. So in this shot, a panning motion to the right following the bird goes into a very, very brief shot of something like a, like a key lock hanger and then directly matches to the Turkish flag. Here another hyperlapse walking backwards and in the end of the hyperlapse he zoomed in. That's what creates this zoom effect here where you see like the image is distorting. So first he did it more wide angle, made a hyperlapse, took picture by picture, walked backwards and then here he started zooming in and right before the transition he's making a zoom effect. This was pretty interesting. With this motion he's following the stroke of the guy playing the cello goes to the right and then goes to the left and connects onto another shot that is going from right to left here he's matching the motion which is a very good technique to simply keep a nice flow in your video the camera is tilting downwards and then in the next shot it keeps tilting downwards more faces, emotions, listen to the sounds. The moment someone slaps on the table you always hear a matching sound to that 
I could be wrong, I'm not exactly sure. If this plane was really there in that shot, then he got the perfect timing in getting this shot and the plane right in the middle. It could also be that he edited this plane in post. And what you heard in the background though was the plane sound effect that was added afterwards. And then he zooms in very much and then you see a quick shot of a plane and that reveals a bird under it. So these transitions go so fast that you simply, your brain kind of needs the buffer to realize what's happening. And then if you stack those effects and those super fast cuts on top, that's what then gives you that the wow effect because your brain can't process it that quickly. And that's what really makes those videos from like J.R. Ali, who we looked at a few weeks ago, and something like this video, Watchtower of Turkey, really stand out because it's so fast paced, you can't process it that quickly and it blows your mind. Please. There's another hyperlapse next to another hyperlapse. More people, emotions, faces, hands. You know, I always say this, it gives another level of depth and quality in your videos when you add sound effects to everything. And there's a few different ways you can do that actually. If I can think about it like four different sources or ways how you can add sound effects. The easiest is if you directly record it with your camera. So if you have a microphone on top, like with a Rode Video Micro, for example, that I'm using to record this here right now, that's the easiest. If you directly get the real sound from the motion, from the object, whatever you are filming in that moment, that's perfect. But sometimes that's not possible and then you can use something like a external audio recorder to go somewhere very close to an object and then just simply record the fitting sound to that and use that as a sound effect. And those are the options that you have actually in real life. And then there's also the option to simply add sound effects in post. That can be a super useful technique, especially if you shoot stuff in very slow motion, like higher than 60 frames per second. Many cameras don't even record sound there anymore. So I use two different sources for that. One is a website where you can get free sound effects. Sometimes you have to credit people. You have to look actually at the license it's called freesound.org. I'm going to link it down below. And the other thing is a paid service that I also use, which is epidemic sound because they also have a very big library of sound effects links to everything below you can check that out here he's doing a match cut first you have a lot of very blurred motion and then you suddenly see a foot and it match cuts to another foot so it's the left foot and matches to the left foot and they are exactly aligned at the same position nice cut In this drone shot here you see that it's fast forwarded because the balloons are flying very quickly and also the drone is making a significant distance here that simply couldn't even fly that fast. So this was fast forwarded here, you see that? Here goes into another hyperlapse. This was actually funny. Normally when you shoot a hyperlapse, decide on a motion or a direction or a path that you want to go along with first. And what he did here is he walked backwards and then he started turning in the other direction. Normally you would choose one straight path or one circular path. Here, you see a motion that's going to the left from here. The bird is flying to the left, your eye is following to the left. The same goes with these few seconds here of that shot. It's blocking and you follow looking to the left. Here he matches these two shots. Of course, those are two separate shots, but simply because only you see gray, it fits perfect to make the cut there. Same here, goes to gray and then it reveals the tower behind. Same principle goes for all these shots here. You see something's blocking the view and after that cuts to a new shot. Here's a different pattern, but it's all blocking the view. Very quick cuts, more faces, smiles. This was a very cool transition. If you look at this here, someone is walking in front of the camera, then it gets blurry. And here he masks out to the next shot in which you see this mirror, but you first don't realize that it's a mirror. You only see the stone because it goes so fast. And then he starts walking backwards and you still see the reflection in the mirror. So if we look at this again, pretty cool, right? And the cuts go so fast and here he's matching just a lot of very similar imagery. So the fish being caught, then fish transferred in the bucket. And these all last just maybe a half a second or so. Again, hyperlapse locking in front. This one was super, super fast where he added a lot of shots behind each other. So here's the hyperlapse going to the right, comes first, then another motion to the right, only a couple of frames. Until then you see the guy throwing to the right, bird flying to the right, three frames of a train while the camera is going to the right. And here's super, super fast cuts. It only always lasts for two or three frames. Hyperlapse birds, another hyperlapse. He's doing a lot of masking, so when someone or something is in front of the lens from the actual object that he was filming and uses that as a cut to the second shot. This was pretty cool. So here you see the boy appearing and at the same time on the right here comes in a black frame. It first looks like this is in the exact same shot as with the boy, but then when he closes the door you realize, no, this was actually the shot and he only masked it out and there behind that you saw the boy. Super cool and matches it to closing the door and then a new door going all the way through. So, so this door closes like this and goes open on the other side. Super, super cool. More hyperlapses. 
here again he's matching the motion of the camera going up the camera moves up this looks like he shot it from the window of a car and then another flag coming to block the shot and then reveal the next one behind it the watchtower if you look at this now, it looks like one fluid motion in which he took the camera and waved it like this, but it's all individual shots that he cut whenever it was blurry and then added next to each other. This is very blurred, camera moves to the right, a new shot, camera moves up and down, a new shot. Listen to the sound, especially here. It makes such a difference if you not only see someone drumming, but you actually hear him drumming. And now this is probably the fastest part of the entire video. So let's look at this one again. Goes from this shot of the cigarette, the train. He matches it to another shot of that train, but a lot closer. Then here he zooms in and matches that to a new shot of a similar train. He starts zooming in and then continues adding several shots behind each other with faces, but all this motion of zooming in. Zooming into the face, zooming into the face, zooming into the face. And that was like four or five shots in a row with each like four, five, six, seven frames maybe. And that gets super, super engaging and interesting to watch. You can't process it that quickly. Let's look at that again. Here comes the train. Zoom in, 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 in. And then he goes out. So first he zoomed in on the faces and now he's adding like 10 or 12 in a row where he's all zooming out. There's always this motion backwards, moving back out of the picture, back out of another picture. This time moving the glass down from the teacup, moving back. Listen here again when the ice cone hits the bells. And this was the fastest paced part of the song and now he really slows the tempo down. So for all of you who are beginning and starting out with editing, when there's a very very fast and high intensity phase in the music, make the cuts much faster and shorter. And then when the music starts slowing down and breathing, make the cuts longer, less motion, less intensity. That's exactly what he's doing here. He's doing speed ramping when the motion goes slower and then speed ramps out of it. And now at this point the video is almost over. But then in the last 30 seconds he really puts one more on top and adds like another super super fast paced passage and that comes now. So this is the most high intensity moment in the music. So many shots you can't see anything. That was so crazy. You just simply cannot follow because it's so fast. Let's look at that again. So here what he's doing very often is he takes the camera and then goes on a shot and in that motion you see so much blur and uses that one to cut. Put that here. Then here this is too fast. You see one or two shots of the crowd here. Then it goes to some playing cards. Then you see the woman only three shots and you see guys sitting in front of the wall only three shots. Then someone here with a trombone and it's so fast you can't even process it. That's what's flashing you so much. Notice again here the moment that the hand is moving across the playing stones. You heard the sound effect to it. The moment that the water came towards you, it's zooming out twice. Now it starts zooming into the guy and then into two hyperlapses. This is just so fast. And it ends on those last few shots from the very beginning. If you remember that, those exact shots here were in the very beginning of the video. What a crazy video. Absolutely no wonder that this one had several million views. Massive, massive props to Leonardo. So thanks so much for everyone who has suggested this one. If you want to see more of such videos, suggest new ones down below. Over there is a playlist with six, seven other of those videos. If you like this one, go and watch another one there. Until next time.